Manchester United have won back-to-back games, and that's the most important thing, the three points. And if we actually beat Man City next week, which we won't, but we would go three points behind Man City if we win against them in our next game, which, considering the awful start to the season, looks quite good. But let's be honest, when I look at this game, first half was absolutely horrible. First 35 minutes, disgrace. The team grew into the game. We got better. We gained control. We were pretty good in the second half. We deserved the win. Ultimately, we were good from the 35th minute onwards. But considering this is a Sheffield United side with two points at the bottom of the league, you know, it still wasn't convincing. You know, we didn't, you know, great, better. We gained control. We go into the game. The second half was much better. But considering how bad that Sheffield United side was and how useless they were, the win, it just was not convincing for me. Eric Tinell boosted a bit more. Now, Maguire was good. Anana was good. There's about five players that do want to praise. For McTominay, if it wasn't for the goal, would have been the worst player on the pitch. Bruno was dreadful. And I see a lot of people saying Bruno needs to go. Bruno needs to be sold. Bruno doesn't need to be sold. I'm a massive Bruno fan. I'm Bruno's biggest fan. I think he's fantastic. But he needs to be dropped from Mason Mount because he's not been good enough. He needs to kick up the bum. Bruno, it's time for Bruno to leave the start in 11. Bruno does not need to leave Manchester United. He's one of our best players. And if we play with possession-based players behind him and we play better as a team, we know that Bruno's got that quality to create something out of nothing. He actually could have got two or three assists today, but he was poor. He was giving the ball away a lot and he wasn't helping us with the control and tempo in the game. Mason Mount should have started with Bruno Fernandes today. And McTominay was dreadful. And I know he scored, but he cannot start the next game because he McTominay in the midfield, yeah, I'm going to be honest... When you're playing in midfield and you have six touches and about six passes and Hoyland, who's in the graveyard shift, is having more touches and passes than you, that's when you know you've not been good enough. I don't. You score goals, great, but you've not been good enough. So for me, the midfield, that first 35 minutes was a disgrace. Amrabat was really good, actually. I'm going to get into Amrabat, but the midfield, the first 35 minutes was a disgrace. But you've got to give Harry Maguire credit where credit is due. Harry Maguire was absolutely fantastic today. Honestly, he was, he was man of the match and well-deserved. As you can see, Maguire, look at that progression and carrying. Maguire was actually probably someone helping us control the game, progressing the ball forward, carrying the ball forward. He was actually making an impact on us going forward. But where Maguire obviously stood out was defensively. This is one of this is one of the best performances I've seen from Harry Maguire. And maybe dropping him, maybe giving that a kick up the bum would be good for him. He's not better than Martinez and he's not better than Varane. But I tell you what... Harry Maguire is better than Lindelof, and I said that for a while. Lindelof had been better than him a little bit last season, but with the way Lindelof's been, and Lindelof was poor today, but I'm not going to go at Lindelof because he was out of position. But with the way that Lindelof was, <laughs> has been this season, Maguire has to start a bit. I mean, you've got to give... I know a lot of people don't like Maguire, and he was awful in that season under Oli, and he says silly things in press conferences, but he was brilliant today. He breaks the line, he progressed the ball forward. He was our best player comfortably, and you've just got to give credit where credit is due for Harry Maguire. You look at statistics like this, um, I should go do, do this just with, uh, with more zoomed in. But Ethan Talks obviously put his statistics up like 104 touches, 76 passes completed, 14 passes into the final third, 13 accurate long balls, one out of one tackles, one, five out of seven aerial duels, one. You know, fantastic. I think he won two out of four ground draws from what I looked up. But these are slightly different to the stats I looked up. But yeah, like absolutely fantastic. 104 top touches. You know, if we saw Twadabo with these stats posted online for a Nice versus PSG game, we'd be saying, oh, sign up Twadabo. Some people have a Maguire agenda. And look, but today you've got to praise him. You know, McTominay's a player that I don't think is good enough to play for United, but I definitely praised him a lot after Brentford. And, and Harry Maguire was absolutely phenomenal today. And, he, and he's been good in his last few performances. And I think it's time he starts next to Varane ahead of the Manchester derby. I think when you play well, you should be rewarded. I'm Bruno Fernandes' biggest fan. I am someone that's so avid pro Bruno. And I'm going to say right now, Bruno should be dropped from out. And I'm someone that wanted Maguire dropped last year when he was poor. I think Maguire should be starting over Lindelof because you've got to reward players on form. Because if you reward players on form, it tells them if you work hard, you get back in the squad. And Harry Maguire, and, and one thing I will give him, is he could have done a Jadon Sancho and Strott. He's not been picked. He's not been played. He could have done a Jadon Sancho and Strott. He didn't. He worked hard. He got back in the team and he played well. And Jadon Sancho should be taking notes from that. He really should. It's a, it's a shame Jadon Sancho did what he did. But I, I'm glad Maguire had a, had a good game. And I have to say, Maguire won us the game. Say what you want, but Maguire won us the game. You know, you look at his passes here. Look at these passing networks here. These were fantastic for Maguire. Look at these passing networks. Pretty much the accuracy of these passes is, is insane. 
You look at that there, 46 out of 62 forward successful passes. You're thinking he's going long, you know, progressing the ball, bringing the ball forward. Like he was helping us with control. Now, do you know what really helped us with control, though? was Amrabat in the second half. I'm speaking about the positives, but there are a few negatives to get into. I have to talk about Ten Hag. I have to talk about the style of the play, the lack of control. The first 35 minutes were awful when the win isn't convincing. It's still not convincing for the season. Yes, we've won our last two games, but they weren't convincing wins. The way we're playing is unsustainable. But I do want to play praise a player that you know I'm a big fan of, and that is, of course, Amrabat here. Um, you know, not just about stats, but, he, you know, first 30 minutes, he wasn't great. But the second half, from minute 35 onwards, he found his feet and he really helped control the game at the end. Again, <coughs> 50, you know, most of 53 out of 63 passes completed, nine out of nine duels won, six out of six ground duels won. He won, he won 15 out of 15 duels, five out of five tackles, four out of four long balls, you know, three out of three aerial duels won. You know, in total, he won 18 out of 18 duels, made three ball recoveries, made five tackles. He, you know, he defensively cleaned up. He, he did his shift defensively. And I think, you know, where we lacked control and we were like playing hot potato in the midfield and we were pretty iffy in the final third. But from about minute 30 onwards, Sheffield United after that penalty, they didn't really have a sniff. They didn't have a, because Amrabat was there tied it up. Or if Amrabat wasn't there, Maguire was getting in with his head. And I think actually that won us the game because... There was a lack of control. There was a lack of tempo and attack. And we've got to talk about that. Um, Tomane was probably the worst player on the pitch, followed by Bruno Fernandes. Now, Bruno Fernandes creates things. He makes things happen. And I'm a big fan of Bruno because I know his quality. He can make things happen out of nothing. He's so good for Portugal. And I don't think Man United are playing to Bruno's strengths. The way we're playing around Bruno is not good. We know how good he is with people like Matic and Pogba behind him. But he's not been good enough. And I think it's time Bruno leaves to start in 11. I don't want Bruno to leave Manchester United. A lot of people do. I don't. I think we can succeed with Bruno in the team. I see a lot of people saying we'll never be a good team to Bruno leaves. He gives the ball away a lot. De Bruyne gives the ball away a lot. You know what I mean? Like you can be, we can win titles and be a fantastic side with Bruno in the team. It's just that we've got to have Bruno at his best. We've got to utilise him and play in, the, in, in a way that makes Bruno good because there's no doubt in my mind he's one of our best players. But right now, we should, Mount should be playing over Bruno because Mount has been better. And, you know, I think this game was crying out for me to mount for parts of it as well. You know, I, 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 he was unlucky to be dropped. He really was. Um, but I, I guess that's what it is. I, I understand why he rewarded McTominay. Fair enough, but McTominay was crap. Next game, it's got to be Mount Bruno Amrabat or it's got to be, for me, um, Amrabat, either Mejbri or Eriksson. I'd probably say Mejbri in the Manchester derby because of the legs and Mount. I think, for me, that's what you've got to do. May know, will it be too early to drop him in the Manchester derby? Absolutely. Because, for me, I love Bruno, he's captain, but he's got to realise... You know, you need to step up. You need to like play it cool. I know you make things happen, but you need to step up. Same with Rashford. And I, I actually thought Rashford looked looked a threat today, but he's just lacking confidence. And he's gone back to that old Rashford. And I just, for me, I think Rashford's confidence. I think if Rashford can get that confidence back, he can be good for us. I thought. Hoyland was good in terms of holding a ball, probably should have scored a goal. I think the final third was so disjointed. There's no goals coming from that front three, Rashford, Hoyland and Anthony at the moment. And I think Hoyland with more service, 100% has goals in him. We know Rashford has goals in him. But again, Garnaccio was brilliant when he came on. Yes, he missed the City, but it was offside. Garnaccio comes on, he makes such an impact. I thought he was... He was fantastic when he came on. And I think that Rashford is struggling without that left back overlapping. He really is. You know, Lindelof just wasn't overlapping. And I will give Rashford that. But I'll probably play Garnacho over Rashford next game, but the way it is. Garnacho comes on, he drives forward. He's always looking to make things happen. He's always looking to influence the game. And I thought Garnacho was really bright. He really made a difference. Delo's goal was phenomenal and Delo had a good game. But we're missing that left back overlapping with Rashford. We're missing Rashford's confidence, but not getting the goals. I think Hoyland should have got a goal today. He had the chances great for him. But one one thing I will credit Hoyland on is he held the ball up so well. He held the ball up absolutely fantastically. I'll give Hoyland credit for that. What he does off the ball, you know, his ability to hold the ball up and control games is massive. And I think Amrabat and Hoyland and even Ericsson coming on, we managed to slow down the tempo and, and, and get more control of the game and we got a lot better but ultimately we needed a Delo wonder goal to beat Sheffield United and that's what worries me much better in the second half much more control some good performances from some players but we shouldn't be relying on a, on a, on a Delo wonder goal to just beat Sheffield United who in the first 30 minutes of the game embarrassed us if we did that in the first 30 minutes versus Man City we'd be 4-0 down and that's something that we've got to think about going into that Manchester City game anyway I think I touched upon most of my points here um, and, oh, Andre Nana. Andre Nana was very good. He's been iffy these last few games. 
But I have to say, Andre and Arna really impressed me today. Arguably up there for man of the match with Maguire. Made some brilliant saves, looked confident. Hopefully that's a big game to get Andre and Arna's confidence back. And, you know, I'm a big fan of Anana. I think he will become good. I think he will be a good signing. And hopefully, you know, today's game helps that. Thank you for watching. Smash your like, smash your subscribe. See you next time. Bye.